Hello, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar. My name is Jeremy Bosch, and we're really excited to have a, a big audience here joining us today uh, for the session, How to Facilitate Effective Online Consultations on Challenging Local Government Issues. Now, whether you're a small uh, municipality or a large city, uh, there's at least one, and I say at least one, uh, you know, issue that's maybe uh, has the community um, polarized a little bit. Uh, and today's session is all about how to handle uh, a difficult situation, a difficult issue, and gather that feedback online in a constructive way from people that actually live in your community. So we'll be talking about the tools and the approaches specific to local government and how to achieve just that. Before we get into the content, I want to talk a little bit about uh, just exactly uh, how uh, this is all going to work. Uh, for those of you who haven't attended a webinar before, we like to make it as interactive as possible, which means we're looking for as many questions as possible. So uh, to that end, uh, to get your questions in, uh, on the GoToWebinar console, there's a questions section. You just drop it down. Enter in your questions whenever you have one. Uh, we have a group in the background who will be getting uh, questions to myself and to Mike and to Mary, and we'll get as many of those questions in as we go throughout the session. Just so you know, Everybody who attends the webinar or is registered for the webinar will receive a link afterwards to the recording as well as to the slides. So don't worry about having to take a bunch of notes. We've got you covered there. Uh, we're going to keep the session to a maximum of 60 minutes. So we're going to try our best. So somewhere in the 45 to 60 minute range uh, will be uh, what the focus is. So now to introduce the two others uh, on the webinar with myself here. First of all, Mike Yoder. He's the commissioner in Elkhart County, Indiana. Uh, thank you for joining us, Mike. Thank you. And uh, Mike has uh, been on Elkhart County's uh, commission for uh, 14 years as one of the elected county commissioners. That's 29 years in leadership roles with the Indiana Farm Bureau and is also active in the county's Economic Development Corporation Board of Directors. And um, we'll learn a lot more about Mike and um, his uh, approach to online public consultation here very shortly. I'd also like to introduce Mary Lee Young. She's the Communications Manager at PlaySpeak. Uh, hey, Mary, thank you for joining us as well today. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, so Mary is an expert in online public consultation, and not just on how to do it, but also on how to get the word out to uh, citizens and make sure that you're getting all the engagement that you need. So Mary has a lot of experience in this area and will be uh, providing a lot of valuable insight as we go. Just briefly on the agenda, uh, pretty short and sweet. Uh, we're going to keep it very focused today. Uh, public consultation best practice introduction is going to be our first our first piece. So talk a little bit about PlaySpeak and some of the tools available for local governments uh, to do public consultation online uh, in a better, more constructive way. We're then going to take a bit of a deep dive on Elkhart, Indiana and County and the case study of uh, what Mike has done to kind of use some of these tools and some of the outcomes uh, that he saw. Uh, we'll do a more formal Q&A session, so if we don't get to as many questions throughout the course of uh, the webinar, we'll make sure to put some time aside to get to as many or all of those. We'll talk some next steps as well. If you wanna learn a little bit more about how you can put some of these approaches into action. So at this point, uh, I'd love just to uh, get a little bit of a feel uh, from the audience with a quick poll question here. And love just to get a sense from everybody on how uh, you're gathering public feedback today. So this poll, uh, if it hasn't showed up, should be showing up here uh, in just a uh, moment. Uh, and I can see now a couple people are responding. Just want to get a sense here as we get going and get started, just how people are gathering public feedback online. And there's a multitude of ways uh, available uh, for people right now, whether it be Facebook, your social media platforms, some online forms or surveys, uh, emails. So it's really helpful for us as we and jump in here just to get a little bit of context. It's also interesting to see where everybody's at as well as we have uh, about 100 or so now people attending from municipalities of all sizes across North America. So it's great just to get a, a sample size here as we get things started. Seeing we've got a, a large majority of people that have put in their vote, I'm just gonna close it and then we'll share the results here with everybody. So it uh, looks like 43% uh, of people are using some form of online form or survey, 21% social media, 20% email. Uh, you know, quick question to you, Mary, uh, in your experience when dealing with, uh, with local governments, 
um, and how they're doing it before, kind of maybe implementing some tools more focused, uh, more focused uh, tools to local government. Is this uh, usually about what you see? Yeah, we usually see um, either one or a combination of these. So we might see people doing online forms for more serious issues, but also doing a, a little bit of social media. And for others, they might just be collecting via email, for example. So sometimes it's not just one or the other either. Right. And we'll talk about a very, uh, an approach that goes across a number of different uh, ways here in just a little bit. Great. So thanks for your feedback, everyone. We'll have another one of those coming up here shortly. Uh, I'd like to now turn it over to you, Mary, uh, just to do a bit of an introduction to uh, online public consultation best practice here, if you can take it away. Great. Thank you, Jeremy. So I just wanted to start by sharing a little bit about PlaySpeak. So what PlaySpeak is, is that we're a location-based citizen engagement platform. And so what that means is that we're designed specifically to help you consult online with people within specific geographical boundaries. So think of about a lot of the issues that you deal with in your communities. Um, you might not be interested in hearing from people outside of your community. You want to know that you're actually hearing from residents um, within your a specific neighborhood, within a municipality, or within a specific region. And so if you're using tools like Facebook or if you're gathering emails, that's a great way to get feedback, but there's um, there's no way to really tell where the participants are coming from. And sometimes that's not the most effective when it comes to a very specific local issue. And so with PlaySpeak, you can actually be confident that the feedback collected is actually coming from people within your community. And so here are just some examples of issues um, in communities that are quite polarizing. Um, so think about Airbnb and short-term rentals, right? You wanna make sure you're hearing from people actually within your community, whether that's renters, whether that's homeowners, um, you know, um, whether that's local businesses that might be impacted, the cannabis legalization, bike lanes, um, you know, resource development, a lot of these issues are very jurisdiction specific and you wanna make sure that you're actually hearing from people who live in your community. And so I'm just gonna share two examples of projects that um, we've done. Um, so the first one is actually a bike and pedestrian network um, in the city of Encinitas in California. So as you can see on the map um, to your right, the city of Encinitas is made up of five communities and they wanted to hear about um, how they can improve mobility connections and quality of life along the coastal corridor. As you can see, there's a highway that goes along um, the west coast there. And so on the map, you can actually see where participants are coming from. You can see the majority of them are actually clustered along that highway, which makes sense because those are the people who live close to it and probably use it the most frequently. And so using PlaySpeak, they were actually able to see where their participants are coming from and compare the sentiment from residents within the five different communities. And so our next example comes from the city and borough of Juneau, Alaska. So what actually happened there was um, they wanted to gather community feedback on a proposal that was actually submitted by residents. So this was a process that was initiated by residents themselves. Um, so a, a resident group had submitted a proposal to ban fireworks in parks. And so they were actually hearing from a lot of people who were on very extreme sides of, um, of the issue. And so um, as you can see in the quote there, we actually heard um, at the end of the process, you know, they ran a poll and it, it went to council and so on. But um, the quote we actually got back from the project managers we were working with was that with PlaySpeak, they were actually able to hear from residents in the middle ground and not just from those um, with extreme positions on both sides. So you can see how PlaySpeak helped to diversify um, the range of people who are actually participating and help them hear from a broader audience. Jeremy, um, I'm having some trouble hearing you. I'm not sure if everybody else is. There you go. Yeah, I have to unmute myself there to make sure everyone can hear me. Uh, thanks for that, Mary, is what I was uh, uh, trying to say there. Really appreciate the background. Uh, before we get into Elkhart County and their specific uh, use case and case study here, just want to get another poll question in now that Mary's walked through some of the some of the background and uh, I'm just going to pull it up here now and the question is uh, on which of the following issues are you most interested in hearing from uh, your community so again just really interested with a, in a number of uh, issues out there what are uh, of the most interest uh, the require of the are the highest in demand in terms of you know internally wanting to get uh, public feedback on so uh, just letting that uh, roll through here for a few seconds and then we'll get into uh, 
Mike in Elkhart County. A reminder as well, um, as we get into the meat of the session here, uh, the more questions, the better. The GoToWebinar console is a great place uh, to do that. In fact, it's the only place to do that. But uh, if you want to get your questions in now, we'll get through as many. Um, and as uh, Mike starts to dig into things here more, I'm sure there'll be a few that come up. So just a reminder as well uh, on that. So in terms of the answers, local economic development, 39% uh, is the it's the biggest one in terms of those that are attending. Other 23, I'm not surprised. There's so many issues locally mm -hmm. that, uh, that could come up. Uh, we didn't have enough room to put 20 different there, but uh, 20 different ones there. Uh, parks and recreation, transportation, and then, and then short-term rentals. Um, local economic development, uh, I think we have the right audience, Mike, because I know a big part of uh, what you were looking to understand and, and balance uh, and the, the issue we're going to talk about was you know, zoning application, but looking at kind of the positives and the negatives, and one of those is certainly potentially local economic development. So I think there's certainly a nice tie in there. Yeah, I agree. In fact, I just made some notes. I just changed my comments a bit uh, based on that <laughs> poll. Great, good, good. So uh, with that, Mike, let's turn it over to you uh, and just give a little bit of background here as we start to talk a little bit more about this case study. Sure, let's begin with the challenge uh, that was presented before us, or, or perhaps what might be better is uh, just start with a foundation of what uh, county government is structured like in, in Indiana, because I know we have uh, several people that uh, are on, on the webinar here that may be staff or other elected officials. So in Indiana, uh, county government is, uh, the county commissioner position is, is much like uh, some states, it's county supervisors, so there's three county commissioners. We are the legislative and the executive branch of government. Then Indiana does something really weird with the fiscal side and they, they create another seven member board. But uh, the commissioners are the legislative and executive uh, decision body. So as, as that is the case, then all zoning issues come to the county commissioners for final approval. So the challenge that we had before us is that uh, Department of Homeland Security or ICE uh, was looking to locate a new regional ICE detention center uh, in the Chicago region. And uh, this would be provided by private companies. So private companies would be submitting bids uh, for locations. A private company located a, actually a very ideal spot for a detention center in our, our county. Uh, but to get to that point, uh, to get to a parcel that could be considered that needed to be rezoned. It, was, it currently was a, a manufacturing zone which would allow a detention center with a special variance by the county commissioner. So that was what was before us. And just on the economic development side, uh, just to give you an idea of the scope of this, it was a 1,000 or 1,100 bed uh, facility, estimated over $100 million of new investment. They were not asking for any tax abatements, no incentives at all. And it would be about a $1 million a year in new property tax revenue, in addition to somewhere around 800 new jobs. So one of the challenges that uh, we'll talk about, and the reason we, we I, I began to use PlaySpeak, is that because of the immigration issue being such a controversial issue nationwide, uh, this decision to put a, de a new detention center in Elkhart County for this region was creating feedback, not only from my county uh, constituents, but from the region in Elkhart, in Indiana and Michigan, but I was receiving emails from Pennsylvania and communications from Arizona and California as well. So we needed a way to really confine uh, the feedback and get a better sense of what our community wanted to do with this, with this proposal. So let's talk a little bit about, uh, Jeremy, let's go to the next slide. Just give you a brief uh, uh, kind of overview of what Elkhart County looks like generally. And I won't read all these slides. You can read those. We're predominantly a, a wider Hispanic uh, uh, county, although there are 15. Uh, what's important here, I'll highlight some of the important factors that, that I think play into our decision, our, our challenge here today. And 15, uh, between 15 and 16 uh, percent self-reported is Latino. Uh, but you also notice that uh, we have a number of undocumented uh, immigrants in our community, and that best guess right now is between 5,000 and 9,000. Uh, I would say that we are a diverse community, not necessarily by race, by race, but by culture. So that's demonstrated by the large uh, Amish population. 
but even within our seven distinct communities within the county, there's quite a bit of cultural differentiate, differentiation. So let's go to the next one and talk a little bit about the economy in Elkhart County. Uh, Jeremy. So I, I mentioned the seven distinct communities, but uh, what I want to point out here is in January, our our, our unemployment rate was 2.5%, was 2.4%. Uh, for February, it was just released, it was 2.5%. 10 years ago, in the depth of the recession, Elkhart County led the nation in unemployment. Officially, we were 21%, uh, but unofficially and locally, uh, having grown up in the community, I can tell you without a doubt that about 25% of the people in our community were not employed, did not have a job. Uh, it triggered uh, three visits by President Obama at the time, actually. So uh, we were, the Wall Street Journal called us the red hot epicenter of the recession. So manufacturing is a huge uh, part of our economy. You can see the number of jobs that we have uh, targeting or in the manufacturing um, particular job category i guess the most uh, one of the most most important numbers right now those we have approximately 9500 job openings right now we have a severe employment shortage and this played into our decision process let's go on to the next one So as an elected official you always want to know what sort of political influences are going to be playing into any decision and this slide lays out the uh, complexities within Elkhart County. This, uh, while it is a primarily conservative Republican county, we do have strongholds of, of Democratic uh, of Democratic influence, especially in two of the cities. And uh, another factor which turned out to be really interesting on the immigration issue is we had this local office for the National Immigrant Justice Center, and that was located in one of our towns. Uh, also, just to locate Elkhart County in the world, some of you might know this uh, university called Notre Dame that's in South Bend. So that's like 40 minutes, that's an adjacent county. So we're North Central Indiana. And a lot of college uh, colleges and universities are within this region. And that sometimes plays into social justice type issues. Right. That cover it, Jeremy? Yeah, great job, Mike. Uh, give us a okay. great perspective here as we uh, start to look at your online public consultation approach. So uh, just to kind of set the scene now, uh, we're going to uh, kind of dig in. So we've talked about the issue, this detention center. Uh, we're gonna talk now about how uh, Mike uh, used uh, some of the tools provided by PlaySpeak to uh, gather the feedback to help um, you know his get his knowledge from the community about what they were looking for as it pertains to this issue. And with that, um, I think we'll start here, Mike, just talking about of the the geo verification of per participants and how you actually kind of uh, gathered this feedback to begin with. Well, I mentioned one of the challenges we were receiving uh, a lot of input from a variety of areas, and I had used PlaySpeak a couple of years ago. And I'm not sure why I didn't think about using it uh, at the front end of this issue, but I thought about it a couple months into uh the process and and remembered that PlaySpeak had this geo verification uh, potential and it's very easy to set up on site and, and that's the reason we immediately went back to PlaySpeak and we identified the boundaries of our county here and maybe mary wants to talk a little bit more about this uh capability sure thank you mike so um when individuals actually sign up to participate um, we connect their digital identity so that's their username their name um, who they are on the site with their physical location. So that's their address. And so you can see here um, on the right, um, only residents may participate in this consultation, which shows you um, the distribution of participants for Mike's consultation. And so um, you can also set that for each individual uh, feedback collection tool, which we'll go into a little bit more detail um, as we go. So for each individual feedback collection tool, you can also set whether you wanna hear from residents only or if you wanna hear from everybody. So let's um, carry on. Great. One of the nice tools about uh, with that with PlaySpeak is that it can become kind of a one-stop uh, center. Uh, the all of the accurate information for a controversial issue can be put here. So if people want to deep dive into like the application forms or background information the company might supply, uh, it can be we can put that right here on PlaySpeak. Uh, 
there's the opportunity, there's a variety of tools here. We happen to use a poll, the discussion uh, threads, a survey, and I've already mentioned the background uh, resources. Also an opportunity you see on the overview here that we can uh, clearly outline what the decision is that the community needs to make or the commissioners. And I just wanted to add that PlaySpeak offers a wide variety of tools as well. So these are the ones that Mike had selected to best collect feedback about his issue. Um, but there are also tools um, such as ideation, right, where you can get people to upload images and, and videos and so on, um, more kind of charrette style. Um, or there are also participatory maps where you can get people to pin their feedback on a specific map. So, for example, um, where would you like to see more public art in our community, things like that. Great. So uh, first audience question I want to put in here, and I think it's a good one at this point just to make sure that we're getting a totally clear picture. Uh, the question is, is how does PlaySpeak differ from your survey monkeys or other similar tools out there that are used, I know, by local governments to, to gather some feedback? Well, Jeremy, I think um, when we outlined uh, the issue of geo-verification with something like SurveyMonkey, it's very easy for people to take a survey multiple times. It's very easy for people to take the survey wherever they are. Right? As, and as Mike has discussed, he was getting feedback from, you know, commu um, not only from his community members, but from people in different states, um, you know, people all across the country um, who would not actually have to live with the final decision, right? And we've seen it before where people put up a survey monkey and, um, you, you know, it's easy to just take the survey several times, um, whether that's in an incognito window or, um, you know, a bot that can just take the survey 20, 30 times in a second. Um, but the actual verification process ensures that you're not only hearing from people within your community, but you're also getting those accurate results. Right. It's also interesting that with SurveyMonkey, without the geo verification, you're not, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about this, but you can see on the map that's on the screen right now where the participants were located within the region, uh, the section, or the county that I had outlined. So this clearly told me that I had a high level of activity within actually two cities and the rest of the county wasn't really engaged at, at this particular point. I've never been able to do that with SurveyMonkey. Right, good points, good points. And thanks for the question. I, I want a, another one here, Mike and Mary, for you both uh, as well uh, on the geo verification point, um, some clarity. Is the location of that participant identified automatically or do they have to declare that in some way? Yes, so participants actually have to sign up in order um, to participate. And so during the sign up process, they're prompted for their address. And so then that's triangulated with where they actually are. So, um, and proponents of consultations such as Mike or municipalities and so on can also choose to add additional layers of verification such as phone number, whether it's mobile or home. For, for example, if you have a very, very controversial issue. But as we'll see, even though this was a very controversial issue that Mike had, they didn't have to add any additional levels of verification beyond the basic address verification. And um, we'll explain in greater detail how, you know, um, the rest of the consultation worked. Right. Good. Okay, thanks for the questions, everyone. Keep them coming. Uh, moving on here to talk about the uh, discussion form. Uh, this, this particular tool is not much different, I think, than um, many other discussion forums in the way it looks, but how it acts is different. Uh, we talked about here, we talked about, uh, we, you see the point on respectful dialogue. Uh, so I participated in the online forums with the local newspapers and other forums and have been uh, sacrificed on that altar many times as an elected official. Uh, <laughs> uh, it gets pretty dis disrespectful pretty fast and when people can um, anonymously um, uh, make comments and, and they seldom uh, admit it to me later when I run into them on the street, although sometimes I'm pretty sure I know who made that comment. But uh, the nice thing about uh, PlaySpeak is it tends to as Mary will talk about here in a bit, more respectful dialogue. So we set up a, uh, this discussion forum and actually we had pretty good participation. I just wanted to highlight, as you can see on the left here, um, you can select who can participate, whether that's anyone or residents only. 
Um, so even if it's opened up to anyone, you can still see on the map where your participants are coming from the distribution. Um, and you can also enable discussion moderation, though in our experience that hasn't really been necessary. So as Mike mentioned, right, um, a lot of times, people interact online in ways that they would never do in an in-person situation. Like you would never, you know, go up to somebody and say the things that you would post online. Um, but because participants are authenticated, um, there's the expectation that they, you know, behave properly online. And also, um, the actual geo-verification process also means that people know that it's not just a random person on the other side of the screen that they're talking to. They know that it's a real person, a real live person in their community that they're communicating with. And um, that, that really incentivizes people to behave better. And just another example here, actually, um, in my community here out in Vancouver, BC, um, we actually had, a, in the region, we had a transportation referendum a few years ago. And uh, it's obviously a very controversial issue. And there was a discussion about it on PlaySpeak, um, which had over a thousand comments and not a single troll. There was not a single person that had to be banned. And uh, discussion on um, pre-moderation wasn't enabled either. So people could just post their comment and it would just go up. So I think that really speaks to, you know, the difference when it's, um, you know, when people are asked to authenticate themselves and it really sets that tone and it sets the norm for how people should behave. What was that? Uh, was that comparison between, I'll say, the the somewhat unconstructive or less constructive comments that you might see on some forums? How did it compare to this, Mike? Was that your experience in terms of the feedback being, I'll say, more more constructive as opposed to just turning into you know name calling and some of the things that you'll see on these on these threads um, online? Well, I think it happens really quickly online with with the autonomy that that or anonymity rather that you have uh, on other online forums. I did notice on this one though, as we were moving closer or through this process, I picked up a little sense that even on play speak, some people were getting pretty bold and, uh, uh, but generally this was much friendlier. And I think, uh, and in fact, a couple of constituents said they felt very comfortable, um, you know, participating here. Great. Great couple of additional questions before we uh, get into the survey and and poll aspects uh, here that you um, uh, that you did Mike um, just a, a high-level question here as well uh, how do uh, how do you get people to actually sign up uh, and use the platform what's that what was that that approach like or what was the process there well, because we had used it a couple of years ago, I already had some, I had a core group that was already signed on and signed in rather. Uh, but I'll admit that in my particular community, this was a, well, I thought it was a little bit tough, but I really didn't have anything to compare it to. Uh, we eventually had 460 or so people participate in the surveys. We'll talk about in a second. Uh, Actually, I think PlaySpeak has simplified. Mary may correct me, but I think it was easier to sign on now than it was two years ago. And so we we actually, with a with an issue that generates this kind of emotion and this kind of passion, people will take that extra step to do the verification steps. And and that was a you know going to a previous question, I set up the verification at a, at the most simple level that I could to make it as quick and easy for people to get signed on this first time. Great. Yes, we are always improving the process as well because we know that, you know, we need to find a, a good balance, especially online. You know, we know a lot of the controversy that's going on with Facebook right now. We know a lot of the controversy that's happening with other platforms, um, especially ways that people might be collecting feedback. And um, I think we're always trying to find that balance between, you know, how do we make sure that people are being constructive and people are real and, you know, they're who they say they are online, balancing that. Um, with ease of use, right? So we're always improving that process. Um, yeah, and, no. and I think one of the big ways is also just getting the word out there, right? People can't participate if they don't even know that a consultation is happening. And so that's where a lot of the work um, in terms of actually getting the word out there through news releases, actually promoting it on social media, et cetera, where, you know, that's where that comes in. You know, another point to make at, at this point, I think, is that uh, we really can't view PlaySpeak as a social media type 
of a structure. Uh, this is much, much, much more than that and has the potential, I think, to replace some of the public uh, meeting structures within local government. So this is like, in a sense, voting. And when you vote, you need to register and you need to have certain identification. So this has a higher level of expectation because it's a more important tool uh, to local government. Yeah, great comment there, Mike. Uh, and we'll we'll continue on that, talking a little bit more about some of uh, the survey options and results here as you uh, went through the public uh, consultation process. Maybe walk us through what we're seeing here now. Uh, okay, this is uh, probably this is the uh, the key thing that this let place speak really helped the county commissioners on with this decision and, and first of all I'm, I'm a dairy farmer by background and I didn't take statistics uh, when I was in college so I created this survey by myself and and it's uh, cumbersome and it's difficult uh, but nonetheless we got some really really interesting results uh, because we started place speak uh, late in the process I had already received over 200 emails on this issue and we still had 60 to 90 days to go before the vote. And it was becoming cumbersome and difficult to actually, well, I could see it was going to become even more difficult because there was active, active efforts to get people to participate. So what I did is I created this survey on PlaySpeak uh, that generally sub summarized the answers that are the positions I was getting with the 200 emails and then added one for the county commissioners uh, that nobody had talked about except the county commissioners. And uh, the Place Speak survey, I, uh, I allowed people to pick the top three responses. So, you know, what, how do you feel about this ICE detention center being built in Elkhart County? And you had three options because most people wouldn't fall within one answer, but they'd like, so they had three choices. So let's go to the next slide and talk about some of the results we got and how and why this was was important. So the slides don't really do justice to what we've what we collected. So let me talk a little bit more. I, I created four main categories of response. One was quality of place. How does this uh, detention center impact our quality of place initiatives? Uh, the second was social justice initiative because that was what initially started um, the opposition to this was based on a local college and social justice justice issues regarding immigration. The third was economic development. Uh, the commissioners had some concerns about the impact on our economy of a detention center that might cause employee flight. Remember, we've got 9,500 open jobs right now between five and 10,000 undocumented workers. How many people might leave just out of fear of a de ICE detention center? And then the one that, that actually I was most interested in something called like the rule of law. So if this detention center was being asked to be zoned next to two landfills and our county 1000 bed correctional facility and the rest of the land was agriculture. From a pure rule of law uh, zoning standpoint, this was a slam dunk, yes. And yet we were getting all of this opposition. So as it turned out, and this is, was really fascinating to me, um, I created a scoring sheet that was really pretty simple. It's just that every time an answer was picked, it, it, whether it was in the top three, one, two, or three, it just got a point. 732 uh, points or people re chose the quality of place issue. Quality of place ended up being the most important factor in everybody that participated. And like I said, there was 460 people that participated in this. Secondly, by less than half was the social justice the economic uh, concerns uh, came in third, and then my my rule of law got exactly 20 responses. So nobody cared about the rule of law, but they really cared about the quality of place issue. Uh, and for any anyone that's on on this seminar that or webinar, as an as a county elected official, this this creates a bit of a conundrum because. Uh, you know, we're governed by the rule of law. So we had people saying, we don't want, essentially we were saying we wanted to be a friendly community, but we just don't want you here. Right. I'm gonna pause there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we okay. can go on to the, uh, we can, I think we're gonna talk about how it ended at, and yep. uh, here in a couple slides, we can move on to the poll. Unless Mary, you had something you wanted to add here. No, I was just going to say that, you know, there are a variety of tools and Mike obviously chose um, 
a specific way of structuring his survey, but of course we do offer a variety of um, question types, like single choice questions, multiple choice questions, Likert scales, and so on, that he could have also integrated as part of his survey. And so, so yeah, let's talk a little bit more about the poll, um, which yeah. I think also highlights some of the results that he had mentioned already. Oh, you wanted me to, or you? Yeah, you know, you go <laughs> ahead, Mike. You go so, ahead. Uh, so the the survey was kind of cumbersome and took a lot of time. If you looked at that, there was a lot of reading. Uh, the fact that we had 460 people participate, I think, indicates how emotionally uh, uh, connected to the issue our community was. The poll was an opportunity for them to just say, you know, quickly, where do you stand on this? But again, it affirms what we learned with the survey and and uh, they're just saying essentially it's the vibrant community, that quality. We have a vibrant community initiative here, which is essentially a quality of place initiative. And that's uh, that's what what the what what the driver was. Now let's talk about this. Uh, the, all the dots there on the screen. This is the beauty of PlaySpeak. Is what I learned from this particular slide is most of the responses were generated around the city of Goshen, which is the county seat, also the home of uh, Goshen College. And uh, we were beginning to get some responses out of the larger city, which is Elkhart. But you notice a lot of the county had not participated yet. Uh, some of that's because there's Amish and and uh, while our Amish tend to have smartphones that they carry with them, they don't always use it for this sticker. Um, and generally, the Amish will separate themselves from local government and not participate. And generally, I heard nothing from the Amish community. But, but uh, the Democrats, uh, Democrat Party had most of the, uh, uh, or is mostly centered in the city of Goshen. So I knew that the Democrats in the county didn't want it. Most of the Republican strongholds are in those rural areas, and we really hadn't heard too much from them. But you see more of the uh, of the blues, which are more favorable towards it, are scattered out into the county. So this was a clear indication to me that this uh, very culturally diverse, politically diverse county was being divided somewhat on the uh, on political basis. But uh, when we get out a couple slides, I'll talk about uh, some of the other interesting uh, characteristics of what actually led to the final decision. Mm -hmm. And just a point of clarification, Mary, I just want to uh, put to you, uh, we're looking at a, a larger county view in this image, obviously. Exactly. For, for municipalities that are using it, it's not going to, you'll be able to dig in a little bit more deeply, a little bit more, I'll say, of a zoomed in view to actually see kind of more neighborhood by neighborhood how the responses are coming in. Correct? Exactly. So we've used it for everything from a municipality might want to break down their map by neighborhood, right? So you can compare sentiment in one neighborhood versus another neighborhood. We've even done projects that are very small scale. The smallest scale we've ever done actually is a cul-de-sac. You know, at that point, it's like you could just walk around the cul-de-sac and ask people what they think, right? Um, but they just mapped out this cul-de-sac and said, you know, we're expanding the sidewalks mm. here and you can go online and um, tell us what you think about it. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So this it, it's, very, it's very scalable is what I'm saying. Yeah, and that's the point I just wanted to make there too for people is that um, obviously when we're talking about a county, we're talking about a large amount of space, right? But exactly. when you want to get into issues, you mentioned bike lanes, obviously that issue might be more focused in on a specific area uh, of uh, uh, neighborhood of the community. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you have the ability to kind of get down to that level exactly. uh, if you need. So, All right, so let's talk about uh, all this work that you did, Mike, to uh, pull together uh, this feedback and what was the what was the end result? So uh, let's, let's talk about that here a little bit. Uh, as we discuss outcomes. Okay, before we get to the real final result, though, this is a the slide doesn't actually represent the exact participation necessarily, but is representative of, I think, uh, something that I found very positive about using PlaySpeak. And by the way, I received a lot of positive impact or uh, feedback from many members of the community on the ability, on how we offered so many options for people to participate and share their opinion. So think about, uh, so I've sat through a number of, of, a, of a public hearings, some of them very long with 150 or 200 people in the room, and you're there for, for well, even at two and a half hours. If you're able uh, to get everybody to stay to three minutes, 
uh, you can only talk to about 50 people in, in two and a half hours. Well, we, uh, we had 460 people participate and share their opinion uh, and know that their opinion was listened to and, and heard. And they didn't have to sit through two and a half hours of somebody else talking. Uh, so it's a very efficient way and a very respectful way to collect uh, information. And I think the uh, elected, uh, the county commissioners received much higher quality information this way and from a broader, uh, potentially, if this would have con continued on for another 30 or 40 days, a much broader uh, constituent base. So this was a, a very positive experience from us just from the ability to collect information. Right. Anything to add here at all, Mary? Yeah, and I also just wanted to highlight that in Mike's case, even though he had about 450 people take the survey, um, there were actually 800 people who were following um, the project in some way or other, um, and they could also participate. So they could participate in the discussion forum or the poll. They didn't necessarily have to take the survey. They could do a combination of those um, or just one. Um, we find that things like polls tend to be easier for people to participate in if they don't want to sit down and read an entire survey. Um, and I also just wanted to highlight um, this issue with public meetings as well, right? Um, sometimes they're held at odd times or, um, you know, if you're a parent with kids, it might not be the best place to take them. And so we, we do see that this online process allows you to reach people that may not traditionally um, find a public meeting the most accessible um, or convenient. And um, we've got communities that we work with um, who, you know, th this is a this is something that someone one of our clients told me recently. So they used to do about six public hearings for the big issues in their regional district out here in BC. And um, now they do a play speak topic, which will get maybe a couple thousand views, a um, couple hundred people engaging with it. And so they've cut down the number of public hearings to two. So, you know, we find that it's not necessarily to replace, but um, as a way to supplement it and also cut down on some of the work for the municipality or the region. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, just a question, uh, audience question I want to kind of bring in here too as we, we move through this. And um, I think it's an interesting one for both Mike and Mary in that how do you get, um, I'll say traditionally, you know, I'll use quotes, under underserved populations. You know, I'm thinking seniors or maybe people who uh, uh, have you know lower income uh, involved uh, in this uh, in this type of an approach whether it be you know online uh, or other means um, just to gather that uh, from that demographic as well those demographics as well actually I received some criticism in that particular area once I decided to use play speak we got it up and running pretty quickly and and I actually didn't have any particular staff support other than Mary helping me out from afar um, I failed to put a version in on in Spanish, uh, and I should have done that uh, as I thought about that later. Uh, in our community, we have a, a large number of public libraries that offer um, access to uh, internet access and is widely used. So that's one particular uh, avenue to to participate in this way. But actually, I didn't hear any complaints about not being able to ex to access other than we should have had a Spanish version. And Mary's probably going to tell me it would have been really easy to do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do aim to provide localization where possible um, because we know that there are communities with diverse language needs. Um, so in Canada, we're fully bilingual, for example, in English and French. Um, and we do hope to add more Spanish uh, capabilities for the US. Um, but to come back to this idea of um, reaching underserved populations. So we do not know that, for example, in public hearings or public meetings, um, they are overrepresented by certain demographics who are able to make it, especially if it's a 11 a.m. in the morning meeting, right? So we, we do know that uh, a lot of times this comes back to the idea of online doesn't necessarily replace offline. Um, you're just hearing from people that might not necessarily be able to make it offline. Right, so that might, like I said, include youth, that might include parents with kids, that might include people who are housebound, right, or with mobility challenges that might not come out. And, um, and the other aspect about um, underserved populations as well is a proactive need to reach out to where they are, right? So, for example, when we did um, a skate park project, we had an online uh, 
you know, it's a youth focused issue. Young people don't really participate a lot in government processes necessarily. And so even though we were reaching out on PlaySpeak, um, there was also an effort to actually go out to where people were uh, in person, right? Where, where young people hang out, you know, um, and, and get them to participate in that way. And that go, that's the same for, say, homeless populations and actually going to where they are and, and build that trust, right? And it, it's, not, um, it's not a one-size-fits-all process when it comes to online engagement or engagement as a whole. And the more prongs you can add, you know, you have your online component, you have your offline component. The more of these um, aspects you can bring in, the more diverse um, the responses you'll get. Jeremy, you're muted again. <laughs> there we go. Uh, anything else to add there, Mike? No, uh, no, not at all. I thought that covered it well. Great. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So let's continue on the outcomes here. All right. So I don't know. I was trying to make this a cliffhanger, so I'm not sure I... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but here's what happened. Uh, so we have, we've identified some things here on the screen that... Uh, uh, that I that I identified as positive outcomes for the community and for those that are online that want to know a little bit more about just the political philosophical things that that finally began to play into this uh, as you noted that we, what we were hearing from the community was a large amount of, of consternation about the quality of place initiative and essentially that boils down to a not in my backyard decision and the commissioners were really challenged by that we would have to vote yes because we can't turn something down just because of a not in my own backyard. What we what we could do, and it's it's kind of humorous at this point. I was talking with our county attorney about trying to make a rational decision, and he said, "Well, you're the county executive. You you are able to make irrational decisions, and they hold up in court." Uh, so that's wasn't very comforting. But uh, <laughs> for us, uh, the the the. Potential for economic damage in a community that is so heavily reliant upon manufacturing that, and that had, you know, 9,500 open jobs, we could not risk losing any employees. So I was the lead commissioner in communicating with the company and, and they were very good to co communicate with and, and were very engaged in the process and were very interested in being part of this community. Uh, so the way we set this up with them and, and um, as I had the Economic Development Corporation host a meeting where we had the major employers within the county meet with, uh, meet with the company, and actually an ICE official was there as well to explain what the facility would be used for. Uh, that meeting did not go well for the company. There was a clear indication that there was a, a concern about the fear that would cause employee flight. That gave the commissioner something to, on which to base, I think, a rational decision to vote no. Uh, however, uh, the best of everything happened for the county commissioners is we actually never had to vote on this. Uh, the company, after, I, after a consultation with me, uh, decided that well, I'm wondering if we may have just lost Mike there for a brief moment. Um, I think maybe we can uh, speak to, oh, Mike, are you coming back here? I think we may have lost you, just, Chris. You are, yeah. I think we you're lost you okay. just, just as you were about to make a uh, walk through the, uh, uh, what actually happened there. So maybe just uh, That's your about 30 seconds and oh, then. Yeah, uh, what then happened? Kind of, well, what happened uh, after the meeting with the uh, county executives that uh, didn't go well, I met with the company and, and, uh, they decided that this wasn't the best fit for this community. They decided to pull their rezoning uh, application, which meant that uh, the county commissioners were heroes for all people on all sides of the issues. We, uh, we held this very open forum and collected a lot of information. And in the end, we did not have Oh, I think we're losing Mike there again. Um, I think he did achieve uh, the cliffhanger goal that he was looking for there. Um, what I will say for Mike, because uh, he's coming back in, um, knowing the story here a little bit. Uh, Mike, are you there? Yes, and I see that I'm uh, apparently losing it for some some reason. So I don't know. Tell them what I said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I can fill in some of the gaps there for you. Um, but essentially, I think due to the you know, the company getting uh, 
information about some of the public feedback that was largely against it, they decided to pull out the project before it actually went to uh, vote by the commissioners. How is that for a summary? That, that was good. Am I strong now? Uh, for the time being. Right. So my Amish internet is beginning to out, uh, act up, I think, Jeremy. I'm sorry. I'm not sure what's going on. Yeah, no problem. Uh, no problem there, Mike. Perhaps if people have any questions at this yeah, point. Yeah, so I, I think at this point, um, so that was a lot of what you kind of, I think, pulled together a lot of what uh, Mike had uh, wanted to talk about when it comes to uh, the outcomes. Um, I, I think at this point, uh, just moving ahead here, um, let's jump into a little bit of Q&A. And, uh, you know, Mary, I'll start with you uh, for the question here. Um, just to give maybe Mike a minute just to get his uh, connection back here uh, a little bit better. Uh, and that uh, question is, as I just pull up my list, uh, can a case be made for applications like PlaySpeak to yield a positive or at least neutral return on investment for the tool? Question number one there. And Mary, maybe we'll start with you. Well, it depends on what you mean by return on investment on the tool, right? Are you looking for quantity of responses? Are you looking for quality of responses? A balance of both? Um, or are you, do you mean, are you looking for a specific result, right? I, I think. Yeah, uh, I think it's like in comparison to uh, other methods, Mary, in particular. I think it's definitely, um, you know, in terms of online methods, I would definitely say it's superior in terms of the quality of data you're getting, right? Mm. Um, not only in the confirmation that the results you're getting, the feedback you're getting actually coming from community members, which is a lot of times essential for decision making um, within a community. Um, if you think about issues like budgets, right? We've done a couple of budget consultations um, in different communities and uh, it's especially important for communities to know that the people who are responding to a budget consultation actually pay taxes in that jurisdiction, right? Um, and that's even more salient for things like, say, a resource development project. Um, you know, if, if you want to know whether a mine should go into a certain area and you want to know, um, you, you know, what people who will be living near this proposed project think. And so I think uh, in terms of the quality of data you're getting, it's significantly more robust than something you would get um, either just on social media or just through uh, like a survey monkey form or so on. Yeah. Mike, did you catch that question? I, I did. Why don't you repeat it though? Yeah, I, uh, I think um, I think the question is really along the lines of um, can you defend an ROI or can you expect you know, neutral or uh, even positive return on investment for the tool? Um, and, and to me, I mean, maybe ask the question in a bit of a different way. Um, you know, how much value do you get, you know, from make, you know, having this in, this insight and maybe making better decisions and, and would that you think be able to draw to an ROI, uh, a return on investment for the tool that you know, kind of you know equals what it costs. I'm not sure if it, how easy it is to quantify that, but uh, it, kind of just your thought on the value that it that it provides. Okay, if if you lose my audio, Jeremy, just hold up a hand, okay? So yeah, I won't you keep bet. talking. Yeah, uh, I think it's always difficult to to do an ROI on this type of feedback most people that are elected to a county position are going to want the best quality feedback they can get from the community. And that's often difficult to do. So this provides, it's a new tool to provide just excellent feedback and, and make it easy for people who typically wouldn't participate to participate in a process. So I'm not, there's a credit card commercial, but like this, I'm not sure how you put a value on that. Mm -hmm. Good, good I, answer. No. Sorry, Jeremy, just one more point here, um, too. A lot of times, it, it's not just about the quality of feedback as well, right? It, like, it, it obviously is, but the decisions that you make out of it, being able to defend the decisions you make out of it, you know, having defensible decisions by saying, hey, it's backed up by good data that we're collecting, not just, you know, there's 13 tweets that may or may not come from real people. <laughs> You know, that, that's the difference there, right? Being able to say, okay, we made this decision because we were able to see um, this feedback coming in from actual community members. I think that in itself is very valuable. Mm -hmm. 
Great. Another question for you both. Um, maybe Mary, I'll start with you on this one. Can PlaySpeak be used for multiple topics across uh, county or municipality? Yes, so um, PlaySpeak offers several different structures. So you can do it on a single project basis. So that would be um, on a subscription model on a per month. And we also offer organization wide um, subscriptions. So you pay a flat rate a year and you're able to con uh, conduct unlimited number of consultations. And that's actually um, what PlaySpeak was kind of intended to do, right? To create a hub for people to come for all the community issues. So whether that's bike lanes or whether that's um, housing affordability or whether that's resource development, um, all the different issues that a community might be talking about. Um, someone only has to sign up once and they're notified on an ongoing basis of all of these different developments and projects. Um, and so um, over time, the incremental cost of actually reaching out to people um, gets lower and lower because, for example, we've got communities now where um, every time they have a new consultation, it goes out to 1,500 people automatically before they even have to do any kind of promotional work, right? right. So um, over time, it actually becomes easier and easier. Great. Uh, to that point, a question related to that uh, as well. How is the uh, issue and tool communicated uh, I think in your instance, your mic, to get this level of traction uh, in terms of just public feedback? Well, I actually have a pretty active uh, Facebook page, so I was able to promote it that way. But I also had some support from the local newspapers, uh, editorials uh, that helped promote it that way as well. And I think word of mouth. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, and then, Mary, any, any strategies that you use uh, as well uh, outside of uh, my specific instance here? Yeah, so um, PlaySpeak itself has built-in tools that help you promote your consultation. So, for example, we kind of have a built-in CRM. So if you have an existing mailing list or newsletter list, so in Canada, obviously, that would have to be CASEL compliant. Um, in the U.S., there are different laws around this as well. Um, so you can actually upload your existing email lists and it'll prompt people to participate and you can actually track whether people have participated and you can remind them um, within 48 hour intervals. Um, and then you'll get to work with me. Um, I'm the community <laughs> strategy, and so I work with our communities to actually determine what the best strategies are, um, depending on who you want to reach out to, um, depending on, you know, what the issue is, you know, we might be reaching out to community groups, we might be doing use releases and so on just to get the word out there. Great. And, uh, you know, one final question, then I think we'll have to close this, uh, close this down. Um, what about non-resident property owners who pay taxes? Can they be consulted? Yes. <laughs> Oh, um, I just wanted to, uh, we didn't really get into a lot of detail about the actual functionality and the demo, but um, there is a uh, capability for people to add multiple places to their um, profile, so to speak. So for my profile, for example, I have my, my residential address, which is where I rent, and um, I also have my parents' um, house listed. So I have two locations. Um, uh, on my profile and I know for example um, within PlaySpeak um, one of my colleagues has a cabin um, on an island that she, you know she pays taxes on and so on so she's got two locations her house here and her cabin um, so you can add multiple um, locations to your profile and be notified of consultations that are happening in different jurisdictions. Mike you had There's a bit of a, a reaction to that so yeah, yeah. <laughs> your thoughts. <laughs> It's not an unusual question. Uh, well, PlaySpeak is not the only tool in place. And uh, so everybody in the county has my cell phone number. They can call me, they can write me a letter, they can uh, email me. So there's other ways to communicate um, if, if you can't do it on PlaySpeak. Right. And I think the point is, is that. That's I think pretty unique, though, Mike. Yeah. What's that? That's pretty unique, though. I, I don't yeah. think a lot of municipalities would be that open to having everyone have their phone number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think the point is just the flexibility that Mary mentioned uh, in terms of just being able to kind of set that situation up as much as you uh, as much as you need. So, uh, with that, just want to talk briefly about next steps as we hit the hit the top of the hour. So we had a lot of people who uh, asked questions about pricing, and we had a lot of people who wanted to who got questions about who wanted to see the tool in action get a better sense of how it might work for their specific municipality or specific use case. 
I highly, highly recommend if you're one of those people uh, to book a, a meeting to learn how to better consult with the public online. Uh, what this meeting is, is uh, first of all, we, we listen. Uh, so we spend the first few minutes listening to what your specific issues are, to listen to how you're consulting with the public uh, online currently. Uh, and you'll come away with a clear plan on how to uh, engage with verified citizens online, um, how much that might cost, what the effort level might look like. So you'll get the full picture. Uh, we didn't want to go into those details today. This is more of a, an educational introductory session for a lot of people. There's a link on this page. Uh, follow that. You can uh, fill out the form to request a session uh, and we'll get one set up for you as soon as possible. Uh, we will be sending this link around in the email as well. It will come with the recording and the slides, so you'll have access to that. But highly, highly, highly recommend uh, going that route. You're, you're going to get a whole ton of personalized uh, information related to your specific municipality or county and your specific use case. So certainly suggest going that road uh, 100%. Uh, just want to talk briefly about iCompass. So PlaySpeak is our newest partner of our growing uh, partner uh, innovation network. Uh, iCompass, uh, if you haven't heard of us before, we've been around for closing in on 20 years, working with uh, well over 500 local governments now, uh, focused uh, on innovative solutions that are used by all sorts of local government professionals across uh, North America, across uh, a variety of different roles. Um, in addition to the citizen engagement that uh, Mary talked about today and Mike and myself, uh, we also provide a full comprehensive suite of meeting uh, records management solutions, uh, board management solutions, all that in addition to trying to make local governments more efficient in how they manage these processes, also more transparent and to better engage with citizens, which is why we're so very excited to have PlaySpeak on board as one of our newest partners. So uh, a lot more to come about that uh, relationship here moving forward. With that, Mike, Mary, Thank you very much for your time today. Uh, a lot You're of welcome. questions that were thrown at you. I really appreciate uh, all of your insights and the time it took to pull this all together. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Jeremy. You're welcome, Jeremy. Uh, so like I said, expect an email uh, from us here in the next uh, day or so uh, with all of the links to the recording and the slides and that you saw here today. Have a good rest of your day and we hope to see you soon at a webinar uh, coming up in the next uh, few weeks and months. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.